Hey guys, so some of you have asked me how I use layers or how to use them effectively. So I thought it would be a cool idea to kind of show you the process or the order that I put my layers in when I'm creating my illustrations. So on the screen, you see clips you'll paint and an illustration that I've done earlier. So this is a really simple illustration. There's not much to it, but it's an awesome um, example to kind of illustrate how I use layers to create my paintings. So let me just turn off this final layer because this, this is the finished piece that you see on the screen right now. So let me just turn it off and I'll run you through um, my process and kind of explain the order of my layers and why I've chosen that order to create my illustrations. And so you have a layer called background or paper. It depends on the software that you're using. And so you just want to make sure never to paint on your background directly. You always want to paint on a separate layer. And you do that by just clicking on this icon here if you're in Clip Studio Paint, or you can go up to layer, um, new layer and raster layer and just hit okay and you'll have a new layer. So always remember to, to draw on a separate layer, never on your background. So here's my first layer with my sketch. And so as you can see, this is separated from my background layer. So here's my background and here's my sketch. And so I can kind of edit them separately and they're not really connected to each other. So meaning that when I'm trying to fix something with my sketch, I'm not affecting the background at all. And that's kind of the, the main idea or concept behind layers. So one way to kind of visualize it is, um, let's say you have a sheet of paper and you were going to take another paper and just place it on top of the first paper, kind of stacking them on top of each other. That's kind of how layers work. So you're layering one sheet of paper on top of another. This is a really safe way to experiment and to draw because you're actually never messing up. So anyways, moving on, this is my first layer, my sketch layer. And what I've done next is I created a second layer, but this time below my sketch. And that's the layer called base colors. And with this layer, the idea is to place flat colors for all of the individual features of my painting. So as you can see, I gave her a flat color for her skin, for her eye color, for her hair and her clothes. And so you pick a flat color for all of the individual parts of your illustration. And um, this is just a really nice and, and quick way to experiment with different colors and color combinations. And so I do this with all of my paintings. And once I'm happy with the colors, I create another layer below my sketch layer, but on top of my base colors, so in between, and this is where I start shading. And so I'm just introducing some really basic shading here and um, some lighting. And so once I'm happy with the, the basic colors and shading, that's when I start painting on top of my sketch. And that's the layer called layer six here. So over here, that's the layer palette. And you can see that here's my sketch. And everything we've done so far is below my sketch. And so now that I'm happy with the shading, that's when I start committing to it and I start painting on top of my sketch. And by doing so, I'm slowly kind of um, making the sketch disappear because the paint is laying on top of it. So you can see I can always turn off individual layers and my sketch will still be there and it's untouched, meaning that I never change it in any way. It's, it always stays the same at this point because I don't want to run the risk of messing it up or of doing something wrong. So I always keep separate layers. So whenever I want to experiment with something, so for example, if I wanted to give her an earring, but I wasn't sure if it's going to work out, I would create a second layer and experiment with the earring. And if it does not work out, I just delete that layer and move on. Many times when I'm drawing on paper, what happens is that I have an idea. So I want to add something to my drawing, but I'm afraid of messing up because once the drawing is messed up, you're basically um, screwed, right? So there's this fear in my head of messing up. And by keeping everything on a separate layer, you're basically free to mess up because you can always just delete that layer and um, give it another try without running the risk of destroying your original drawing. So moving on, this is the first layer on top of my sketch. And you can see that now I'm painting on top of it and I'm committing to certain features. And this is where I start rendering out the details. And so at this point, 
I'm really relaxed because most of the work has been done and now I just have to clean it up. So as you can see, the next few layers are just kind of making it look nicer and, and more pretty, but there's not going to be a whole lot of big changes anymore because most of the work has been done. So um, let me just turn on some of the other layers and you'll see that I'm just rendering out the, the illustration without kind of like um, doing any big changes to it anymore. So here I'm just kind of fleshing it out, making it a little bit softer and nicer and adding some more lighting. And this is my final layer. And the final layer is basically only tilting her eyes a little bit. And so the idea is to um, keep everything on a separate layer and to work in a non-destructive way. So you're never running the risk of destroying something because whenever you're trying out something new, whenever you're playing with a new color, you keep it on a separate layer so you're not affecting any of the other layers. So for example, if I were to change something now, I would create a new layer and I could play around with the colors. So let's say I wanna change the color of a shirt or so. And let's say I do not like the color. I actually didn't mess up anything because I can just turn this layer off and I'll be back to my previous stage where everything looked good. And so layers are really powerful and I know they can be a little bit confusing if you're new to digital painting but I would advise you guys just to check them out and to really understand how they work because they're really not that difficult to understand. They're a really basic concept. You just have to imagine um, that you're kind of layering one paper on top of another, kind of like you're taking tracing paper and you're placing it on top of your drawing and that's where you get to experiment and try out new things. So this is a really fun way and an easy way to create your illustrations and I know that this is probably to most of you, this is um, pretty obvious and you've known about layers already, but to the people out there who are new to digital painting, this is really helpful. And there's no single digital painting that I ever created without using layers. So I always use layers and sometimes I have up to a hundred layers. It always depends. And um, sometimes I only have five. It really depends on on the painting and there's really no limit. Just because somebody else is using one layer for their painting doesn't mean you have to stick to one. You can use up to 200, 500, however um, many you need. And um, it also depends on your computer, of course. So some computers can't handle like a hundred layers, but if your computer is strong enough, um, then yeah, feel free to use as many layers as you want to and make your process as comfortable as possible. So. I really don't care whatever what other people do when they're painting. I only care about my own process. And if I feel like using 200 layers, then I'm then I'm going to do so. And if I feel like only using five layers, then that's fine as well. So don't get too focused on other people. Try to find your own workflow that works best for you. This is the one that I like. I like to keep everything separate from each other because that way I'm not running the risk of destroying any part of my illustration and I can always go back. So this is a very relaxing process. There's no stress involved, no pressure, and I never have to fear of messing something up. So anyways, this kind of wraps it up. This was a rather short video, but I just wanted to give you a basic introduction to layers. And again, this works in any kind of app, any kind of software. So if you're using Photoshop, Procreate, or um, Krita, or whatever is out there, layers work the same in any type of app. So just try to figure them out and I'm pretty sure you'll love them. So anyways, guys, let me know in the comments below if you found this useful. If you liked the video, then please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, then I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. And as always, guys, I love you with all my fart and soul. I hope to see you in my next video. Peace.